Say you want to become a system admin and you don't know where to start. Well, there's three things you basically need. Qualifications, knowledge, and then networking. And I've been a system admin for about 20 years now, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and touch on it. For my day job, I still do system admin work uh, two days a week. However, I have transitioned to do a lot more YouTube stuff over on Chris Titus Tech. So if you want to check me out over there, I do Linux based tutorials and that type of thing. So with that, let's jump into it. Now, if you'd like to ask me a question live, I do stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday over on Twitch.tv, Chris Titus Tech. I'm usually in the science technology category. So number one, qualifications. What do you need to become a system admin? It really boils down to experience and then also certifications and the certifications are really just to get your foot in the door a lot of times people uh, get a ton of certifications but they don't actually put into practice what they're learning and this is extremely important you do this I can't emphasize this enough so if you want to become a system admin you actually need to know how to administer systems kind of that's just kind of how it works uh, but I know myself when I got into it, I got a couple certs. Now this was in the early 2000 and almost every Windows, every server you touch was a Windows server. So I had two certs starting out and that was SBS 2003 or Small Business Server 2003 and then also Windows Server 2000. Uh, and those were like my first uh, just kind of get your feet wet certs. And I was able to get just a help desk type position with that. Now, mind you, I couldn't touch servers because I didn't have the experience. And so many people trying to get into system admin work run into this chicken and egg scenario. How do you get the experience if nobody hires you for that work? And if you just do help desk, well, you're just gonna get stuck there if you don't better yourself somehow. So my solution to this was I had a really good buddy that I networked with. I've actually worked with him at many bi different businesses now, uh, but he was just that whole aspect of being nice to all your coworkers and understanding everybody's strengths and weaknesses and being able to actually network. So if you're saying, wait a second, I'm, I'm not a social guy. Well, you need to practice those social skills and be able to actually talk to other humans. That is very, very important. Yes, system admin work is primarily with the actual computer, but to get the job, you need to have uh, connections. A and to get those connections, it usually starts in the help desk and talking to other people nearby. And for me, I was able to network. And then I, I had a system admin friend of mine and he was like, hey, I'm doing a migration. Why don't you tag along? So I was basically working for free uh, for a weekend or two. And he kind of guided me through how to set up a server. Even though I had the certs and everything, it was a different thing actually applying that knowledge. Uh, the certifications is great to get your foot in the door, but you really need, I, I highly recommend getting a mentor of some sort to actually be able to shadow and understand what system admins do. Because there's so much more than just adding and removing users in Active Directory. I, I consider that a help desk position, even though sometimes it's labeled as a junior system admin. Now, with that said, getting that experience is extremely important. And if you don't have someone you can mentor, you need to create a test lab. Whatever it can be, an old computer, whatever it is, you need to install a server uh, on it. I would recommend getting your feet wet in both just a traditional server. I highly recommend CentOS for Linux because it's a very good uh, rail-based server, a Red Hat server. To, to learn starting out. And for Windows, Windows Server, probably 2016, uh, even though 2019's out, you can download the evaluation of both and kind of tinker around. But just setting up the basic test environment so you can break stuff. Because starting out, you're gonna break stuff and it's best you don't do it in a production environment and you do it in this test lab. So that's the basis of getting experience. Shadow someone if you can, if that's not an option setting up those test labs and really understanding server is is prominent and watch lots of youtube videos i wish i had this when i started my career youtube is just such an excellent resource to just learn anything so uh with all this you should be able to get a basic level of knowledge to get into that uh system admin role when, once you get hit these qualifications now it's not just getting qualifications and having the knowledge and as far as the knowledge, what, when you have that test lab set up or you're shadowing someone, uh, don't let them, one, take advantage of you and you just have you set up computers the whole time. You want to be doing more stuff than just that. And 
same with setting up a test lab. Don't just install Windows Server and go, hey, I can install server. You need to be touching on a variety of subjects. And here's the big ones I want to hit. So first off is Windows Server Active Directory. Almost every business has a traditional Active Directory in Windows Server. Uh, they're usually called domain controllers. And these domain controllers are basically what hosts Active Directory. So set up your server, promote it to a domain controller. And if it's the only domain controller, it's called a PDC or a primary domain controller. And from there, you can start adding users and then you can test add certain workstations. Obviously, this is a very basic level thing, but getting in there and understanding how to utilize Active Directory is very important because once you get in and you're going to be doing scripting and things like that later on, having a good understanding of just the organization or the OUs, the organizational units, and those types of things really will be able to be very beneficial. So set up that server, promote it to a domain controller, and then start hacking around. Break stuff. Uh, I highly recommend doing block-based backups so you can easily revert. If you can set up a hypervisor you know, or a virtualized environment, that's also a very good practice of getting your feet wet in kind of both a Linux base, but also utilizing Windows as well. Um, so I use XCP and G for this type of test lab. Actually, I got a couple servers back there that I constantly am launching VMs and doing different things on to just trial things. And those aren't nice servers. That's a third gen uh, I-5. So not very powerful at all. They were throwaway units uh, that a business gave me. So uh, that's cool. You can, you doesn't have to be a very powerful machine, but setting up these test virtualization environments would probably be my go-to point number two. That makes you so you can tear down and build things very easily, or you can just go and do something crazy and then just uh, take a snapshot before you do the crazy thing and then just revert it back. So that's kind of a powerful tool for a test environment. So number one, Active Directory. Number two, virtualization. Number three, would be learning to interface with O365 or Office 365. Now, this is a very important thing. I've done a lot of Office 365 uh, migrations this past decade, probably upwards of five to 10,000 users over the course of uh, about four businesses. So that's how many migrations I've been personally responsible for and, and brought to O365 from an on-prem solution or on-premises solution. So bringing these over and learning how to interface with these online providers is very important. Office 365 is probably the first one you're going to mess around with. And usually it's Exchange Online just because the ROI, the return on investment for a business is very good. Uh, back in the day, hosting your own exchange and, and a lot of the email servers was just a, a nightmare for a system admin. And luckily nowadays, most of it is you connecting to either Office 365, there's other services that exist as well, but most of them are just resellers of Office 365. If you're paying more than $4 a mailbox, usually that means you're doing something wrong, but that's more of the management piece. As a system admin piece, learn how to interface with uh, Office 365 at the very least and understand, understand like the basis of PowerShell. And you can do this in Windows 10 uh, and, and just understand a lot of the PowerShell capabilities in, in connecting to the O365 instance and then just do test mailboxes and stuff just to uh, get your feet wet and, and sample queries because it's something you absolutely need to know, especially when you're dealing with the email aspect of system administration. So now that we're on the subject of cloud providers, I would highly recommend learning uh, VPS providers. The ones, uh, the big one in the room obviously is AWS, which is Amazon Web Services. And you absolutely need to know AWS uh, to really make it in this field today. Now there's other, probably two other ones I'd probably, uh, I see a lot is Azure or, or G Cloud, which that's Microsoft's Azure and Google uh, cloud uh, services or platform. And those are very good to kind of test the waters. And I've actually made some videos over that. Uh, I know I, I made one where setting up a web server uh, and, and setting that up in one of these VPSs. That's also very good to do as a system admin. This gives you the capabilities of creating websites, interfacing. This kind of gets into the DevOps scene. So it's not crucial, but understanding the administration part of this and being able to spin these up in a VPS or a virtual private server is, is very important. And probably the last thing I would recommend, um, if it, it just depends. I wanted to kind of give you basis. You know, you got your Exchange Online, you got your 
uh, cloud host that you probably need to know how to connect to and utilize. And then just basic interaction with Windows Server is extremely important. Um, the last one's probably Linux Server Administration. I can't tell you how many Linux servers I've spun up over the past 10 years, uh, which is kind of funny because when I first started my career in early 2000, I almost never touched Linux or barely even ever installed a Linux server. But as uh, the late 2000s, early 2010s rolled around, Linux servers are something I think everyone should know how to use. So definitely learn Linux. I myself am actually use Linux desktop as a full-time uh, daily driver, which is kind of amazing. I just started that in this past year, but I've really and just gone to love it because of some of the nuances of Windows 10 that I'm not too keen on. So with that, these are the basic knowledge set that you need to know. Now, the last thing I wanted to touch on was networking. Networking with people is one aspect of it where you need to be talking to your coworkers. You need to be sociable. You need to establish those relationships. As I said earlier in this video, that's extremely vital for your success because I can't tell you how many times I've had uh, something happen. And if I hadn't had good relationships, I wouldn't be able to get out of that jam or I wouldn't get that job. So it's very important that you network with other people. Uh, just, just know that not only to get job offers and those types of things, but also so you have someone to call on if you know you run into problems, which you will have problems that you're not gonna be able to solve by yourself uh, where you're gonna need some of that support. And it's so nice to have uh, uh, some friends or just coworkers that you can rely on. So very important establish those relationships. And then the other portion of this networking piece is simply know how networks work. <laughs> I mean, I can't, I can't emphasize this enough. If you don't know what an external IP is or, or what an internal IP is or a static and a dynamic IP or IPv4 and IPv6, you need to know these basics. Uh, know what subnetting is, know what how to connect different networks together. This is just, you don't have to go too crazy in depth, but at the very least, watch a couple hours of YouTube videos and understand networking. Set up two different networks on two different uh, routers in your internal one. They don't have to be anything fancy, but just something to get your feet wet and learn how routes work and how a lot of the routing goes through these networks. It's extremely important. At least have a basic understanding. I'm by no means an expert in this area, but I do understand how a lot of it actually works and routes uh, traffic. So this helps with troubleshooting because you're gonna be setting up a lot of firewalls and gateways typically when you become a system admin. And it's very important you know what you're putting in there and you're not just typing in a bunch of numbers because, well, that's just how you saw it done on Google. So learn, learn your basic networking as well. So that was the basics of system admin work. I absolutely love being a system admin. I can't speak an, enough good things about it. It's such a great profession. I could probably do YouTube full time. Uh, however, I have a, basically a part time gig as a system admin these days, and I only go in a couple days a week. Yes, there's some headaches that arise from that, but at the same time, I just love it because I love my job. I love that work and just making videos would get kind of stale. So it's really nice to be able to mix that in and still stay relevant with a lot of the content that I teach. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Zach will be by to definitely answer any of these questions. I'll definitely pop in the comments section from time to time. But if you'd like to talk to me directly, again, hit me up over on Twitch. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one.